Um, so next week is a children's program. Two weeks from today will be our adult Christmas katana. It's just going to be a great um, Christmas season. And thank you so much for being at my church today. You are a tremendous congregation. Do you believe it? Amen. Do you believe that about yourself? Amen. Um, today I want to minister to you from the standpoint of this. Is uh, we need Christmas every day. Amen. In fact, I just want to entitle this, We Need Another Christmas. Alright? Because you may have to say, we need another Christmas. Well, I'm speaking of Christmas. I'm obviously not speaking of December 25th, which is the day that we celebrate the coming of Christ. Uh, we don't know that Jesus was born on December 25th. That was just a date somebody picked. It's as good a date as anybody else. And, and I believe in celebrating that day and, and being with your family and, and remembering the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen? Amen. But it's so much bigger than that. It's so much more important than that. Because the season of the Advent and the coming of the Christ was the birth, y'all hear me today, the birth of the Word. It was the incarnation of the Word. Amen. And Paul prayed and he said, he told his disciples, I travail, I'm praying real hard that Christ be formed in you. Look at somebody and say, we need another Christmas. We need another Christmas. I need a Christmas in me. I need the Lord to be born in the stable of my heart. This is the barn. I need God to come in. How many witnesses do I have in the room? How many low places do I have in the room to say, I need the Christ to come be formed, to be born in me. I need to be born again in Him. I need to have this Word come forth from me. I need another Christmas. Amen. And Christmas is not a one-time event here if you think about it this way. Christmas can be every day. And when I think about the things that transpired this week, and my wife had, and I had an opportunity to get away, we are going to be have been married for 24 years tomorrow. Give her the hand. Because for 24 years, she's been putting up with this. That's quite an accomplishment. Amen. So on the way down, to our, we took a little trip to Galveston. On the way down, we listened to the news the whole way of the horrendous thing that happened at a Christmas party. At a celebration of what should have been the birth of Christ. And people who were loving enough to actually do a baby shower for a couple that would come in there and discount and disparage and take life and wound. Oh my Lord, we need another Christmas. Amen. We need it to happen again. We need it to happen in our nation. We need it to happen in us. But I'm going to tell you, it ain't going to happen in Washington, D.C. It ain't going to happen in Hollywood unless it happens in the church. Amen. 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 Instead of looking out, we need to look in. Amen. 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 So look at somebody one more time and say, we need another Christmas. Need another Christmas. I'm going to tell you when another Christmas will happen. We're going to begin reading at verse 26 of Luke chapter 1. If you'd like to stand for the reading of the word, you can. You don't have to. Uh, we thank God for spared life. Uh, I got a text saying that a young man was in an accident. Just said a prayer. It's all, all you can do when you don't know when a young man is sitting in our service today. Amen. A little wounded, but it's all right. We thank God for that. We thank God for that. Amen. Amen. So we don't uh, discount God's blessings and every day that we have on the planet is a gift from God. Amen. But we need another Christmas. Amen. Verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at the same, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth the Son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this thing be, since I do not know a man? 
And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come up on you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Father, right now I ask that you speak through these lips of clay today, that you touch my tongue with a coal from the altar, that you help me say that which needs to be said. And Lord, to the people of God who desperately need a word from you, who desperately need, Lord, to be touched, and desperately need, Lord, to have Christmas once again in the stable of their hearts, I'm asking God that you do it. I know, Lord, that you are not a man, that you should lie to the Son of Man, that you should repent, and if you're the same yesterday, today, and forever, and if you did it 2,000 years ago, you will do it today. And God, we just right now surrender and render ourselves and these things to you. And we ask, Lord, that the Christ, that the Christmas, the birth of the Word happen again once again in us. And God will give you glory. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth. Good will toward men. We speak these things into the, into the eternal realms. We speak them out into the atmosphere. We speak them, Lord, into the ozone layer of the earth. Good will. Peace on earth. Good will toward men. Glory to God in the highest. In Jesus' name, Lord, we give you these praise for these things being done. And all of the saints give God a big old Amen. 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 You see in the house of the Lord. One more time, put your Bible in your lap. Take the two hands and go out to engage us. And clap down one more time. Amen. 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 If I had the tongue of 10,000 angels, I still couldn't praise them enough. If I started today and praised to my dying breath, I still couldn't praise them enough. And I'm just talking about what you've done up until now. If I started praising and shouting and crying and running, I still can't praise them enough. If I praise them in a way that you roll your eyes and say, that man has lost his mind. If, you, if I give God a crazy praise, I still can't praise him enough. Amen. So today you have permission to give God praise. Amen. Look at your name and say, you got a right, you got a right. to give him the glory. Give him glory. You, got a right you got a right to praise him. Amen. I'm going to use my right today. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We need another Christmas. Amen. We need another one. Amen. When does it happen? Number one, another Christmas will happen for you, in you, with you, when God speaks. Look at your neighbor and say, this is real easy today. No child left behind. This is not going to be difficult. When God speaks. So the first thing I read was the angel of the Lord came to the Virgin Mary and said, highly favored one, blessed are you among women, for you shall conceive a son. And his name shall be called Jesus. How many? Glad for Jesus. <laughs> and he shall be called the Son of the Holy One. The Son of the Highest. God spoke and declared what was to be before it was. Because that's what God does. God says it and it is. Can I get a witness in the house today? How many believe that God creates by what he says? How many believe that he's a speaking Jesus? How many believe that Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago stepped out onto the steel of the boat into the stormy winds and into the waves crashing into the boat to where the boat was about to sink and said, peace be still. And peace happened in just a moment's time. Because he is a speaking God. And the issue is not if God is speaking or when God is going to speak. The issue is are you going to hear him when he does? Look at your neighbor and say, you need to clean the taters out. That him that has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, present tense, 
in the church. If He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and if He creates by what He says, and if He calls those things that be not as though they were, and if He doesn't do anything without telling His prophets first, God is speaking. The issue is, is are we listening? And if you want to have another Christmas, you just need to listen to the Lord speak. Listen to Him speak to you today. Don't just hear God speak on Sunday. Listen to me today, saints. I had a uh, sister, Sister Mount. This is Sister Vicky's mom. She's a delightful lady. Well, she said she was asking us to have a church once a week, and I would have church more often. I, we had we go we go to revival if y'all come. Y'all here today? It's not me, it's y'all. <laughs> y'all ever heard the breakup story? It's not you, it's me. No, it's not me, it's y'all. And we have more church. But anyway, she, she's cute. She said, well, do you just eat once a week? I said, no, ma'am, I eat every day. The deal is, I may not go out to eat every day. You need to daily eat the bread of life. And you need to become a self-feeder. And you need to understand as much as you're hearing from the Lord today, and I believe that you are, you need to have your ears peeled and hasten toward the throne on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Cut the television off. Set the cell phone down. Settle yourself down and begin, begin to meditate in His Word day and night, and you will begin to hear the voice of God. His sheep know His voice. And when God speaks, the birth of the Word is formed in you. It's because faith comes by hearing and hearing by a word of the Lord. I want you to put a hand up and say, Lord, I need to hear from you. I'm here to tell you today that you shouldn't make a move without hearing from God. You should make a big decision without hearing from God. If you have a tr if you have a troubles hearing from God, push back from the table. It's called fasting and prayer. And let me tell you about prayer today. Everybody say prayer. prayer. Even MC Hammer knows you got to pray just to make it today. Amen. Put a hand up and say, oh yes. Oh, yeah. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party, but the Holy Ghost party on the side. Let me tell you something about prayer. It's a two-way street. It's supposed to be a conversation. So as much as you're down on your knees and you're praying, oh Lord, God is in trouble again. And you just wear his ear off. Hush up. My wife said, instead of the Christmas rush, let it be the Christmas hush. Begin to listen. Begin to listen. Begin to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you. Let me tell you, this is so intricate because this is not a somewhere, somewhere, someday out there God. This is a God who resides in the seat of your soul. Put your hand on yourself and say, God is here. He's here. He's not out there. He's here. He's everywhere at the same time. So He is out there. But he's out there and He's here. But we think of Him as out there in the heavens of brass and God can't hear you. As much as you can hear me, just as loud. You can hear me without the smartphone. You can hear me. God can hear you, and if you'll listen, you can hear Him. Amen. Here's the issue. God doesn't always speak in the way that you think that He's going to. It's not always in the rocks crying out. It's not always in the wind tearing. It's not always in the, with a fanfare. If an angel fell down out of the ceiling, wings flapping to tell you something, first of all, happy all hit the door. <laughs> I know that. I know that. But it's not always with the angels. Sometimes it's just a still, small voice. Sometimes the voice of God sounds an awful lot like your own voice. How many have an inner dialogue? I, I'm, I, my mind is going a million different miles a day. I think I got something good. I remember the, the line in the movie where Austin Powers gets up frozen and he doesn't have an inner dialogue. He's just saying everything out loud. But if you have an inner dialogue, it's your voice in your head. And God uses your conscience, the Spirit of the Lord on the inside. You've got that little angel right here. You've got that little devil right here. Just like the cartoons. And the angel says, he didn't mean it. Don't hold it against him. Forgive him. That's good. And that devil right there says, you need to roll your sleeve up. You need to ball up your fist. And you need to black both his eyes. 
Because of our nature, it's dual, it's divine, and it's fleshly. And in our flesh dwells no good thing. But everything that you need is in God. And without Him, you can do nothing, but you have Him. So I can't do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's right here, and He's speaking. He wants to tell us something. If you're a parent today, God will give you insight to your children. A lot of times it's not the, the spanking or the sending to the corner is what they need. Sometimes we need to figure out what's going on in the Spirit of the Lord. I'm telling you, I had a Holy Ghost mom. She knew when I was doing something wrong. She knew. Were you doing it? You know. <laughs> Couldn't get away with nothing. That's how we need to be. In this day and time when there's danger on every hand and there's there's all kinds of things going on, on in the world. We need to hear God. Don't go in there today. Don't go in there. I remember the story of how many people that were spared and on 911 because they didn't go to work that day. Listening to the Lord. Oh my Lord, we need to be so sensitive to, to God. And when you hear God speak, you can have Christmas again. Look at somebody say, we need another Christmas. We need another, we need another Christmas. Number two, the second time. And the second way, it's the second when Christmas happens again, is when the Spirit falls. When the Spirit falls. Now this is a Holy Ghost church. And we've got varied backgrounds here. And I, sometimes I like to know, how many of are from a Catholic background? Put a hand up. All the Catholics in the house. Alright, Catholic, that's great. How many Methodists do we have in our room? Have you been Methodists? Oh, we, we, some of y'all need to go and invite some former Methodists. We need some Methodist representation in the house. How many Episcopalians? Trey's out today. He's a resident of Episcopalian. How many Baptists? Oh, I got some macro Baptists. Uh -huh. <laughs> Baptists represent. How many Assemblies of God? Assemblies of God. How many Pentecostal? How many, uh, who am I missing? Brother, Church of Christ. How many, I love Church of Christ. Brother Dave's my Church of Christ brother. No music. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so, so we're a, we're a Holy Ghost church. We got a little bit of everybody, but we still believe in the Spirit fall. We still believe in the fire. We still believe in the Acts two experience. Have, have I got anybody in the room that believes this? We still believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit of the Lord falls, you can experience another uh, Christmas. And Mary said, how are these things going to be? I don't know, man. I've, ne I've never uh, had this happen in the natural way. We're not talking about natural things. We're talking about supernatural things. How many want to get out of the fleshly, mortal, natural realm? Into the supernatural. Into the spiritual realm. Into the miracle realm. Into the power realm. Look at your name and say, I got the power. I want you to sing and say, I've got the power. <laughs> So we believe in the Spirit falling. And Mary says, how is this going to happen? And, and the angel explains it. says, I want to read it. I do not know, man, since that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the highest will overshadow you. We sang this song, overshadow me. In the shelter of your wings. There is something so powerful when you allow the Spirit of the Lord to fall. To have that spiritual experience. Because we're not talking about natural things. We're talking about supernatural things. Now I have to skip ahead in the Bible. and just move to Acts 2 just for a moment. Everybody say this is the Acts 2 church. We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe that there's a recipe. It says repent be baptized. Everyone be in the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. How many believe in gifts? And God gives gifts. How many believe that God is not withholding any of His gifts? He's given them all to us. And a lot of times, it's like a gift under the tree or a gift that you put in the closet for Christmas time that never gets used, it never gets open. Because we don't understand it belongs to us. So I'm talking about the Holy Spirit falling. And when the Holy Spirit falls, we have another Christmas. And it said, and, and Jesus told his disciples that he's uh, sending up. He said, I have to go. They didn't want him to go. But he said, I have to go, go because if I don't go, then the Holy Spirit can't come. And so we understand that the Holy Spirit is Jesus to the church age to everybody. 
that Jesus left in flesh form to come back in spirit form and ever die. Amen? Amen? And so the instructions were, tarry ye at Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high, and in that there is a recipe. Everybody say there's a recipe. If you're going to make brownies, you're going to need some cocoa powder. This is part of the recipe. Amen. 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 And so the recipe was tarry ye at Jerusalem until you be endued with all power. And it says on the, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. And then, everybody say amen. amen. The place was shaken. So here's part of the recipe. The first part of the recipe is, is if you want the Spirit of the Lord to fall on you, wait it happens. He said, Terry, which means wait. We are so in a hurry before the Lord that we don't wait on Him. Good things come to those who wait. Amen. Amen. We're running here, we're running there, we're doing everything in our own strength, and we're not waiting on a witness and a blessing and a power from on high. Tarry ye at Jerusalem. Don't do anything. Don't go anywhere else. Go here and wait till it happens. I'm here to tell you today, if you need a touch from the Lord, God wants to touch you. But sometimes you just got to hold on just a little while. You got to grab a hold of the horns of the altar and let God know that you mean business. And I got anybody in the room that understands that when you tear and when you waited and when you when you told God I would not be denied I'm going to have what you have for me that in a moment in time it may not have happened when you wanted but it happened when you needed it he may not come when you want him but it will always be on time if I got anybody in the room that believes he's an on time God and that's why when the day of Pentecost they fully come and they were in one place in one accord and they got in unity the power of the Lord could fall and I preached last week, I am one. And some of us aren't even unified in and of ourselves. And we want the Spirit of the Lord to come bless us. And He said He would pour out the Spirit on, on all flesh. And that's the bad part of us. That's the part that doesn't want to do right. But we are alienated in our own mind. And we think because we got a drug addiction. Because we're not married. We're hurting. Or we've done some sins. How many got some sins that you racked up? He knows when you've been sleeping. He knows if you've been good or bad. <laughs> we make Jesus a Santa Claus. And we think he's going to give us a lump of coal. But God said, if you ask for a Holy Spirit, I'm not going to give you a serpent. Amen. So we don't wait. We don't believe that He will. But when we become unified, we become one in purpose. And we get in one place and we say, Lord, I'm not moving from this spot. I'm not moving from the spot to the Spirit falls on me. And when the Spirit falls on me, I'm going to have Christmas again. Amen. I'm going to have it again. Amen. You all know that the, 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 uh, the instructions for you and the instructions you give a child, if they're ever lost, you all know the instructions. Stay where you are. And those looking for you will find you. But as long as you're moving, as long as you're getting there and there, and sometimes it's just a big circle, you can't find where you're going because you don't stay in one spot long enough. A lot of you don't are not blessed on a job because you don't stay on that job long enough. And look, I know there's a time to switch, but there's a time to dig in and say, ain't nobody running me off this job. God gave me this job. I'm going to stay here till God gives me something else or till the Lord promotes me above the one that's getting on my earth. Hey, I'm talking about waiting on the Spirit of the Lord. If you want another Christmas, you got to wait on God. Amen. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord. Lord, we're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. When we have a time of prayer, a lot of times in the time of prayer, I'm just waiting on the Lord. I don't labor for a word for you. I'm not digging through stuff and trying to get somebody else's sermon to give you on any given right. I heard a sermon that was good, so I'm going to preach. I don't do that. And I'm not criticizing anybody else for what they do, but I'm going to tell you what I do. And why, if you come on Sunday and you and I, and I hope you enjoy what you get. Now, I know I'm not the best preacher, but I always got something from the Lord. I believe it. 
Put a hand up if you believe it. Encourage your pastor that I believe it. Here's why. It's because I wait for it to come to me. I wait on the Spirit of the Lord to touch it. Amen. And we all have the same honor, the same privilege, and the same responsibility. To just wait and let the Spirit of the Lord fall on me. i got just one more. This is number three. The third way that you can have Christmas every day, and if you need another Christmas, this is the third way it happens. It happens when you let it. It happens when you let it happen. There is a wonderful, wonderful three-letter word in the world that is one of the most powerful words on the planet. One of the most powerful words on the planet. And the word is let. L-E-T. Let there be light. Amen. Amen. I could go into Genesis Amen. and say all the stuff. Amen. And the magic wasn't in the stuff. The magic was in let. Amen. The power was in let. Let, 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 let. I gotta talk about Mary just for a minute, minute because you know uh, some we don't talk. We talk so much about Jesus that we we discount Mary, and we should never discount Mary. She was the she was the Bible says highly favored, and the whole world was going to call her blessed. Blessed are you among women. The Lord is with you. And this is what happened to this young virgin who is probably 14, 15 years old. And I've got to talk about her just for a minute because you've got to need to understand the bravery and the courage it took for her to allow Christmas to happen the first time. She was engaged to someone, but they weren't married. Y'all know what I mean. She was a fiancé, and that's what it means to be betrothed. She was promised. She was uh, on the way to get married. That's what some, some of us are in our own consciousness. We're, we are planning to get married. <laughs> but we're not married yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she wasn't married yet, and she had never known a man. She had never, the natural way that you become a child is you know a man, and you become, I don't have to go, y'all know birds and the bees, they put a hand up and say, I don't want to talk about them. Okay. And we don't have to have some education in here on that. <laughs> if I say yes, <laughs> say oh yes, oh, yeah. say oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so here it is in this day in this time it's not like it was now where the stigma is not as great and she is going to become pregnant with child the angel says the spirit of the Lord is going to overshadow me and I don't know if she's thinking about it or if she's just in faith or she's in all of the angelic visit but if something tells me in that time there had to have been a thought if I do this, then my fiancé is going to think that I've been messing around, that I've been doing something wrong. And when the baby starts to show, everybody's going to talk about me. Everybody's going to say I'm no good. Everybody's going to say, I don't know why he's with me. In fact, this was so scary in this time when she became a child the angel had to go talk to Joseph because Joseph didn't believe that this spiritual thing this Christmas the first time was happening until he got the word and so she had to be so brave and so courageous to say these words that Mary said behold the maid servant of the Lord let it be to me according to your word. Let it be. Let it happen. Let, let, let. Christmas will happen in you when you let it happen. And as long as we're resistant against things that we're afraid of. And we're as resistant against things that we don't understand. And we're resistant against the spirit of the Lord's leading. We won't have Christmas. Y'all hear me today? Amen. It's when we say, let it be to me according to your word. It's when we stop fighting and we stop, um, we stop trying to 
force our own way and our own will and our own action and our own desires and we submit those things to God and we say, Lord, not my will but your will be done. That Christmas can happen again. See, the Word is not going not to sit in the second seat. God is not going to ride side saddle. He doesn't need to be your co-pilot. He needs to be the pilot. And you don't even need to be in the cockpit. You need to go sit up in first class. Let the Spirit of the Lord take you where He wants to take you. And you just say, Lord, let it be. And sometimes in our life things have happened and transpired that we don't understand and we fought against and we didn't want it to happen. And we resisted. And saying, instead of saying, Lord, let it be. Amen. If I could just make an example. Some of us have had a bad relationship. Oh, well, I'm just going to preach it this way. And you didn't want to wash that man out of your hair. You didn't want to thank God and great how he's gone. You wanted to cry and blow his phone up with text. Let it be unto me according to your word. I may not understand it right now, but Father alone will know all thou. Father alone will understand why. Cheer up, my brother, live in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. How many witnesses in the room that want to have Christmas in you again? How many do I have in the room that just need another Christmas? Amen. I'm going to tell you, in San Bernardino, California, there are 14 families that need another Christmas. They need another. They need a do-over. Aren't you glad that God is God of do-overs? Aren't you glad that He is a God that says, "I'm going to give you another chance." And in the same way that Jesus was born 2,000 years ago and he was heralded by the angels, he was, he was celebrated. And wise men came to, to bring their gifts. And this celebration, the celebration of the birth of Christ happened 2,000 years ago. We can celebrate the birth of Christ every day in us. Because Christ, Jesus, Jesus is the man. Christ is the anointing and the anointed one and the anointed word. Christ goes past Jesus. You all understand that today Jesus is the Christ. But it's way bigger than one person. It's way bigger than one entity. Because the Christ wants and desires to be formed in us. And that's the majesty and the mystery of of the partaking of the divine nature. And that's what Paul was talking about. He said, I travail to Christ be formed in you, to the Word be formed in you. So you have another Christmas every day. Bow your heads and your hearts. Lord, I deliver my soul with this Word. I believe, God, that these three things, when these three things happen, when you speak, when the Spirit falls, and when we just let it happen, God, that it is happening, Lord, even as we speak. And Lord, there may be someone that has, a, has an issue, has something in their life, God, that they need you to take care of. Them. In the same way, Lord, the birth of Christ was going to be peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Bring peace in the earth. Bring, bring peace in our peace of the earth. Bring peace, my Lord. In our own individual lives, we so need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. If we ever needed you before, we need you now. And Lord, we lift those affected by tragedy in the last few weeks on the other side of the world and on this one. And Lord, we don't want to forget those that are persecuted for righteousness' sake. We don't want to forget that, Lord. We're going to ask, Lord, that you touch and that you move and that you speak, Lord, and that you let the Spirit fall on them. You cause them, Lord, to get to a place in their consciousness, Lord, where they can let it happen for them. But Lord, for us, Lord, the most powerful thing that we can do here today is just let Christmas happen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
I want us to do something here today, and I don't, I hardly ever do this. There's a concept and there's a thought, and there is an idea of getting saved. Or I say getting saved. How many can say that at some point in history, at some point in your life, you remember when you were just saved? It, you know, because Jesus is the Savior, the whole world was already done, but there was a moment when it happened for you. There was a moment when you stepped out of darkness into light. There was a moment when the transformation took place. And it could be that here today someone needs to have that moment. But it also could be that you need to have another moment. It could be that you just need to get saved again. Be saved again. Can I get everyone to stand? And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Don't concentrate on what you're saying behind me. Say the words that we're saying today to the Lord who is here. Uh, let me just tell you this before we pray. Any sin that you've done, He's already forgiven. He already forgives you. There's not anything withholding His salvation plan from you. And there's not anything withholding this gift of the Holy Spirit from you. Amen. There's not anything withholding. But sometimes you just have to let it happen. So pray with me today if you would. Bow your heads and your hearts. Say, dear Lord, I come to you today just as I am with many faults and failures, with many mistakes and sins, just as I am. But I'm also your son. I'm also your daughter. And I'm asking that you receive me once again into your kingdom and that you transform me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. That you take away the heaviness. That you take away the burden. I can't bear this burden, Lord. Come on, tell them, say, I can't bear this burden, Lord. I can't bear this burden anymore, Lord. I can't go another day, Lord, without you. I need you in my life. I need to be saved. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Save me once again. Save me from myself. Save me from my sin. I ask that you do it today. And I thank you that it's done. In the name of Jesus. Every other need, put your hands up today. Father, I speak over the needs in the room. The needs for bodily healing. The needs of financial provision. The needs, Lord, of spiritual restoration. I speak to these needs today. And I call them met. I call them done. In Jesus' matchless name, there's power in the room. The Spirit of the Lord is here. And I thank you, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is hovering and falling upon every individual that is in these seats today. And Lord, I pray for a blessing today. God, that will take them through today and into the week. I pray God for man of today that will sustain them and strengthen them and cause them to know God that you can have a Christmas again. Another Christmas in Jesus.